In this video, we'll discuss important safety information regarding your 3D printer. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Maker's Muse. This is a 3D printer. They really are wonderful little things. I use 3D printers every single day to convert my ideas from the digital world into tangible reality. However, if you're new to this technology, there are some important safety considerations you need to be aware of before you dive in head first. And I need to stress that this video is about safety considerations for FDM 3D printers, so if you have a liquid resin based 3D printer, then you should check out this video here instead. But anyway, enough intro, let's jump right into the first safety consideration with FDM 3D printers. Burn risks. Like I mentioned, we're talking about FDM 3D printers such as this cute little thing from Cetus 3D. FDM stands for Fused Deposition Modeling and they work by melting and extruding this filament which is plastic line by line, layer by layer. And to do that they have something called the hot end which does exactly what it says on the tin. It gets hot. How hot? Well, you're looking at an extrusion temperature from around 190 degrees Celsius all the way up to 300 or more depending on the material you're printing with. And these temperatures are easily hot enough to burn on contact. I have certainly burnt myself many times in the past simply by brushing past the hot end assembly while for example reaching into a machine or performing maintenance or changing filaments. Many FGM 3D printers also have a heated print surface, a heat, a heat bed to assist that first layer in sticking and that can reach temperatures of 100 degrees celsius or higher as well. All of these components absolutely pose a burn risk to yourself, your pets and other family members, especially kids because we all know when you tell a kid that something's really hot don't touch it, they're going to try to touch it anyway. So what can you do about it? Well, you can always look for the temperature readout on the machine's LCD if it has one, but honestly, learning not to touch the hot components of a 3D printer, in my opinion, mostly comes down to a mental training of sorts, not to do something stupid and touch something that will burn you. But for children and school environments, I highly recommend some kind of physical barrier to protect curious fingers from reaching into the components and risking a burn. Many 3D printers on the market actually come with enclosures such as the Up Mini 2 from Tier Time or the humongous Raise N2 Plus from Raise 3D or you can easily create an enclosure yourself using many off-the-shelf components such as cheap desks like the ones from Ikea, the LAC tables and cheap acrylic panels to enclose a 3D printer and stop curious fingers from getting into it. Creating an enclosure also helps prevent risk number two, pinch point injuries. Not many people realize just how dumb 3D printers are. They blindly follow the orders given to them and almost all 3D printers on the market use something called open loop control to move the various axes around while they're printing. The control board takes in G code from your slicer, which is the machine code to tell it where to move to, and the drivers drive the stepper motors the required amount of movement. This is precise most of the time, but there is no feedback at all to determine whether the machine actually did move the correct distance or if it encountered something along the way. This is kind of dangerous because curious fingers could get in the way of this movement and depending on the design and power of the movement axis, could cause some serious pinch point injuries. And to demonstrate the danger of pinch points, I have this Frankenfurter, which is going to stand in for our finger and this is the Prusa Mark II running in higher power mode. Now as I said some printers do have detection when there's a collision but most 3D printers do not. So let's see what happens when I stick the finger into a pinch point. Now obviously this is a little bit softer than a real finger, but there's no question that would have hurt a lot. Honestly, this is a much larger risk to industrial size CNC equipment, but even the smallest pinch point injury can be dangerous. And let me tell you, they can hurt. The solution, well, there are closed loop systems which are able to detect collisions and react accordingly. 
However, as yet, they're still fairly uncommon in hobby grade 3D printers. So I recommend applying common sense here. And again, an enclosure is the safest and best practice to prevent any kind of risk of a finger getting stuck into any of the movement components. Okay, this next one is really difficult for me to cover because I really don't like the sight of blood. Scraper blades, please, for the love of 3D printing, stop injuring yourself with these. Many 3D printers on the market require the use of these razor sharp tools to remove your finished 3D print from the print surface. So combine one part tiredness with one part complacency and mix with a stubborn 3D print and it is all too easy to have this scraper blade slip and slam into your supporting hand, doing a horrific amount of damage. I've seen everything from near misses requiring just a band-aid to massive injuries requiring a trip to the ER, stitches, and even permanent nerve damage. Not to mention that once you start using these things, they get coated in all kinds of contaminants and pose a really significant risk in terms of infection. I absolutely love this technology, but it is not worth that kind of injury. So please take care when removing 3D prints with these scraper blades. Always force away from yourself, your body and hands, because it can slip or suddenly move at any time. So for stubborn prints, this can be a real challenge, I'll admit. And in the past, I've even resorted to a rubber mallet to gently tap the blade under each edge of the print, gently around it to get it loose in a controlled manner. Really though, the best solution in my opinion is to remove the need for the scraper blade altogether by using a removable print surface. I've tested several over the last few years, like the Easy Peelsy I tested a few weeks ago, and I'll link my favorites in the video description. They are a worthy investment in my opinion, not only for safety reasons, but because they also save you a ton of time. You just take them off, pop the parts off, put them back, and you're good to go again. Please guys, I really don't wanna see any more scraper blade injuries in the Facebook groups. No 3D print is worth a trip to the ER. Okay, so far we've covered safety aspects that you're largely in control of. Don't wanna burn yourself? Well, don't touch the hot end, silly. But sadly, there are a few other safety concerns in 3D printers that are beyond your control, and I really wish they didn't exist, but they do. Let's start with one I've personally experienced, risk of electrical shock. Earlier this year, I experienced a strong tingling sensation when testing my Prusa Mark III. Voltage could be felt through the entire frame. It wasn't long, however, till I tracked this down to a faulty ground connection, which meant the fi filtering capacitors in the power supply couldn't dump voltage to ground, so I got that strong tingling sensation. It wasn't mains potential, but it was pretty uncomfortable. Since that video, I've seen several individuals discuss this issue across the internet with many different brands of 3D printers, especially in countries where grounding a 3D printer isn't something that's often considered. So let me be clear here, always ground your 3D printer if it has the option to do so. Some 3D printers do have enclosed power supplies that only have two pins to the wall, and that's fine. You're only getting DC voltage into the 3D printer, but if you have the option to use a ground and it's one of those large metal power supplies, definitely do it. Because in the event that these filtering capacitors fail incorrectly, or a uh, mains wire might come loose and contact the frame, or fray, for example, it could very quickly result in mains voltage flowing through all of that nice conductive metal in the 3D printer's frame, which as soon as you touch, you'll come in contact with. Similarly, some manufacturers have begun using mains voltage bed heaters to reduce heating times. This is great for the heating times, except the fact that you're now moving mains potential wires around, and wires will fatigue over time. And this has the potential of leaving you in contact with life-threatening mains voltages yet again, especially if you're handling mains voltages to assemble a kit or perform repairs. I am not an expert here. I'm a designer, not a sparky. So please do take care, and if in doubt, consult an electrician. Alrighty, time for the final safety concern with FDM 3D printers, and thankfully this doesn't affect all machines, but only a select few. Risk of fire. Yes, sadly, there has been a few cases of hobby grade 3D printers literally going up in flames and causing a huge amount of damage. And with components running at hundreds of degrees for hours at a time, it doesn't take much for something to go wrong and start a fire. 
but thankfully many machines on the market today have protections built into them to shut down the unit in the event of a fault or at very very least blow a fuse or something in case there's a short to prevent excessive current draw. One of these protections is known as thermal runaway and it's built into Marlin firmware. It's literally implemented to prevent the printer from catching fire. This safety feature monitors the temperature of your hot end and keeps track of current being provided to maintain that temperature. In the event of a heater cartridge coming loose from the hot end, the thermistor would detect a drop in temperature despite the current being fed to the heater cartridge and the machine will error out requiring a full printer reset. However, without this protection, if the heater cartridge comes loose, it will just get hotter and hotter and hotter, reaching incredibly high temperatures, melting everything around it, including the aluminium block, and setting things on fire. If you're curious to see just how much damage Thermal Runaway can do, I highly recommend this video by Chris Bate, where he intentionally causes the fault. It's terrifying. With all that in mind, it sickens and upsets me that many 3D printers available on the market today are shipped with thermal runaway protection disabled. Without this protection, your machine could literally catch fire at any time, like when you're asleep. And it's something that a newbie to 3D printing perhaps probably wouldn't even consider. Thankfully, the 3D printing community is not tolerating this kind of behavior, and Da Hai has a great short video showing you how to safely check if your machine has thermal runaway protection enabled in firmware. And there are tons of other great tutorials available for how you can enable it on your specific machine if you're unlucky enough to have it actually disabled. It's important to note that if the hot end of your 3D printer is unable to maintain a stable temperature while printing, such as in the case of an overly powerful cooling fan, it may trip thermal runaway protection in error. But that is a piss poor excuse for companies disabling it from factory. And there you have it, my tips regarding the safe operation of your 3D printer. It is my aim to empower your creativity through technology and I want nothing more than for you to have an absolutely fantastic time using 3D printers to create amazing things. I just want to make sure everyone is aware of these few small safety considerations that go into that. The channel has just recently blown past 300,000 subscribers, so a big welcome to all of you. There'll be a special video coming out soon about that incredible milestone, and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye.